think we're live. Hello, everyone, my plant-loving friends out there. We are cooking today. It's a um, rainy day here in Vancouver, and fall has hit really hard. Like, I know a lot of you are still in the heat, so I shouldn't complain, um, but I'm gonna, <laughs> just a little. So, uh, the first day of fall was what, Tuesday? We had a nice sunny day on Tuesday, and since then, it's been pouring rain uh, every day. And in the afternoon, it clears up a little bit, but um, holy smokes, it's like fall just boom, hit us. And it's chilly, and it's cold. I've been making soups all week. And so, uh, yeah, bringing in some hearty food today, guys. Um, and it took me a few more minutes than I expected to get started, because I thought I had all my ingredients, but I didn't and uh, I had to do a little hustling. And my kitchen feels really dark. I may turn on a couple of lights, but then that tends to throw things off too. So uh, yeah, it's just really gray outside, so it's dark. Today we are making Beyond Beet Burgers. Yes, if you heard it right, not Beyond Meat. Beyond Beet Burgers, these are on my site. And they will also be in my new cookbook that comes out in the summer, Drina's Kind Kitchen. I'll have information on that for you soon. So we're gonna make those today. And um, earlier this week, my oven died, like literally. Um, actually, it was more of a slow, painful kind of way to go. <laughs> it, I thought it was working. It, um, we have a gas range, and I put muffins in, and I'm like, hmm. Uh, there's a lot of gas smell in the house. And then I look, and the muffins were doing nothing. I'm like, oh, God. The oven's not working, and um, we had another night earlier that it wasn't working very well. So uh, I've had that oven for like nine years, and for you guys know how much I'm cooking and developing recipes, so it's served me well, but it's time for a new one. So short of that story is I've been making a ton of soups, lots of things stovetop, and then this recipe, the Beyond Beet Burgers, is a stovetop recipe as well. You can either oven bake them or pan fry them. So the recipe is in the description in the um, description to the video. And also I have my food processor there and the scan pan, which I use to fry the burgers, but um, you know, you can use any nonstick pan or you can oven bake them and I'll tell you about that as well. So let's get started. I have my toaster oven on. I'm toasting up some pecans, which I put in the recipe, but I'll also give you a nut-free adaptation as we go along. So you're gonna hear that ding and I'll have to shimmy back and forth. Um, but let's get going with this recipe. So of course I am um, using a play on words, Beyond Beet, right? And I think most of us know of the Beyond Meat burgers, right? We've all heard of them. And um, I love that they're out there for everyone to eat a meat-free burger and especially in fast food places where teenagers go and my kids can grab one if they're with their friends. Uh, for us at home, it's just not our thing. It's We don't really want that kind of really meaty texture to foods. And um, at least for the most part, the kids like hot dogs and stuff, but uh, it's just not something that we buy. But I love the play on words of Beyond Beet Burgers and I don't like beets. So yeah, why am I developing a beet recipe? Because Sometimes one, I want to challenge myself, and two, I think that there are always foods we don't like. And, oh, Molly's chime in. Hi, Molly. Molly says these are one of her favorite homemade burgers, and I know that's true because she posts them so often on her page. Thank you so much for that. Um, and I'd like to know what your favorite homemade burger is, what your favorite veggie burger is. I have a few from my books and on my site that our family loves. We really love the there's the toaster oven. We really love the mushroom pecan burgers, um, the umami almond and quinoa burgers, um, the, which ones? Oh, in plant part families, the artichoke burgers are really, really good. And we love a good old portobello burger, right? Portobello mushroom burger grilled, that's really good. And there's another one I'm thinking about. Oh, the sneaky chickpea burgers, the kids like those a lot. So I love developing burger recipes, and I used to develop them a little more finicky, I'd say. I'd saute the ingredients, soften them, uh, onions and garlic and that kind of thing. And that's great, right? Like it develops flavor, and it's fabulous in terms of 
flavor profile. But when you're busy, you don't always want to have that extra step. And that's what I want to show you today is how to make them easier. And you can make them easier. And veggie burgers taste way better when you make them at home than when you buy them store-bought. There's so many store-bought burgers that we've tried that are odd tasting, really spicy, like so spicy that that's all you taste is just this weird spice of chili and cumin. And it's like, what, what's going on with these burgers? They just taste like heat. And then there's some that have like a strange chewiness or strange uh, aftertaste. Like there's just weird stuff going on with veggie burgers. And when you make them at home, you can customize some of the components you put in them, how much salt you want to use. You can change up some of the spices. So really, I encourage you to make them at home. It's much like hummus. If you missed my hummus video, it's on my page. Make them, make them, make them, and you can freeze them. And they're very hearty and satisfying. So let's get going with this recipe. And Molly says she thinks she's made all of mine. <laughs> Thank you. And yes, it is true. They're way better. So I also want to hear from you guys. So let me know what burger recipe you love. It doesn't have to be mine. Um, and I'd also like to know uh, what ingredients, like veggies, for instance, you really don't like. So for me, I do not like radishes. I never buy them. I rarely buy beets. I think they taste like dirt. And I will eat them. Like if I'm at a restaurant and they're on a salad grated, I actually really like that. I don't know why. So I like that. Um, and if they're in the recipe like this, where I'm not tasting them individually, I'm quite happy to eat them. But in general, like growing up, my mom used to do pickled beets, and a lot of times I've had cooked beets, and we just didn't really dig them. I know they're so good for you. Um, and raw, I think they generally taste kind of like dirt. So anyone else have that connection with beets? I know some people love them and think I'm crazy. I do think that the golden beets are probably a little softer tasting than red beets um, but so that's one of mine beets um, white cabbage never ever buy it i've only recently started buying red cabbage and radishes just looks kind of like what's the point why would someone eat a radish don't get it <laughs> they don't taste that great to me i don't know i don't know they're crunchy i guess so convince me otherwise guys uh, and tell me what vegetables you really don't like and maybe I can give you an idea on how to enjoy them or you know we can share some ideas on new ways to try them I'm also not a big fan of Brussels sprouts gotta say I know people love them I've tried them different ways I don't love them all right so hi Marie cooked turnips Molly doesn't love cooked turnips and you know what I grew up on turnips my mom always made so like we grew up in Newfoundland and we had a lot of root vegetables that's the vegetables we ate we didn't eat romaine we didn't know what romaine lettuce was uh, the only lettuce we ever had was iceberg and that was occasional so we ate the root vegetables right and they were always boiled so my mom used to do cooked turnip and cooked carrot and cooked potatoes and she'd often mash them and put butter in them so of course that was good right it tasted like salt and kind of creaminess like butter <laughs> so i like them but now i roast uh, I actually don't love turnip. I agree, Molly. I like rutabaga more than turnip. Turnip are a little bit more bitter to me, much more bitter. Oops, I gotta check my cans. I just smelled them. And I was like, uh oh, they're starting to burn. So I did lose a few. I'll show you after. That's what happens when you talk too much. Uh, so rutabaga are, I gotta toast a few more of these and take these off. Hang on, guys. Hang on. Let me toast a few more pecans, and then I'll be back. Okay. Rutabaga are the more yellowy um, root. So uh, I always thought turnip were just there was just one kind of turnip, and when, what we were eating growing up actually was rutabaga. And when we came out west and I bought turnip, thinking it was turnip, it was much more bitter and it was more white. Um, and Terry says she's with me on Brussels sprouts. So Brussels sprout lovers are gonna have to chime in here and convince us otherwise. Molly loves them, see, <laughs> roasted. Yeah, Molly, I roast rutabaga, it takes forever. But if you're roasting other veggies, um, just cut them in half or quarters and roast them up. And then I like to puree them with cinnamon and some salt 
and that tastes good. You could put a little coconut milk in there, and that gives more flavor. Oh, and Beth is saying she loves my sweet balls recipe in burger form. Thank you. And that's in Plant Power Families. Let's see if I can quickly grab the book. I should have these things at the ready, but you know, I don't have kitchen crew here to <laughs> hand it to me. Um, let's see. They are here, they're here, they're here. Here they are, sweet balls. So I use sweet potatoes. People were asking me the other day what I do with all the sweet potatoes that are batch cooked. Well, this is one recipe that they work great in, and you can absolutely make these as burger patties. Yeah. And Leah's saying she also hates Brussels sprouts gag. <laughs> oh boy, we've got a lot of anti Brussels sprouts here. Um, Molly, yes, cinnamon in root vegetables is really nice. Got a little bit in rutabaga, and I also like it in sweet potatoes, like as a puree. It's really nice. Again, my mom did that growing up, so it's one of those things that you enjoy growing up. She'd also puree um, turnip and put butter in it and cinnamon, and that just tasted really good. So, um, recipe, let's get going. Turn off those pecans before I lose them. So I did burn up a bunch of pecans. Here you go, see? They just got too toasty. So you really have to watch nuts when you're um, toasting nuts, and I do them in the toaster oven, not on the stove top. They go from golden to burned in about 30 seconds, about 40 seconds, it's really quick. So I was here chatting, and then I smelled, and I was like, uh oh, too late, right? So you really have to keep your eye on them. and pecans especially the oilier nuts they really burn up quickly seeds too so um, just a tip when you're doing them it's usually about like eight or nine minutes at about mm, 400 or reduce the heat for a little bit longer and, and less risk to burn them up but anyhow composting those so we are getting started and you need a food processor for this recipe so I use this is a Breville people ask me all the time about my food processor I'm not paid by Breville I am an affiliate, um, but I really don't, I've never made money from them. Um, people tend to buy on Amazon, I find anyways. So if you do wanna look at it on Amazon, I have my Amazon link there. And I like this one a lot because it's, uh, it's huge, it's 16 cup. So doing a big recipe like this, and I have had a few people tell me that, well, you need a big food processor for this recipe. And you kinda do, you need at least a 12 cup. Um, I'd say 14 is better. This is 16 cup, it's BPA free, and um, yeah, it can just take a lot. So it's also good for doing batches of things like um, power balls, like protein balls or something like, you know, the sticky kind of snack balls and doing uh, hummus. I did my big batch of hummus in that the other day. Um, Georgette's saying she loves rutabaga with almond butter and brown sugar, interesting. Not a fan of Brussels sprouts. And, oh, well, thank you, Georgette. I, I really enjoy doing these videos, so thank you for sharing that. And that sounds really good, rutabaga with almond butter. I can see that, because I sort of feel like something like rutabaga needs a little bit of fat in there to enhance the flavor with a little bit of seasoning, right? Tiny bit of salt, maybe a little bit of cinnamon, and then either maybe some coconut milk or almond butter or tahini or something to kind of elevate. You don't need a lot, but just a little bit. Okay, so I've chatted, chatted. I've got to get my knife. And so we're starting with really hard vegetables here and we are getting them in the food processor. So I have my beets and we have carrots. So when you use, when I do use carrots for a recipe, whenever I buy carrots, I wash them. I don't, I tend not to peel them. Like once they're washed, if there's a little bit of tiny bit of dirt clinging to them like it's not even dirt I just don't I just don't peel them often unless you're serving them you know and you want them to look nice in that way I don't feel there's any need to so um, unless you have people who, like if you're doing carrot sticks and you know that they won't want to see that natural um, outer skin or whatnot on the carrot I just leave it so we need how much a cup of sliced carrot so when you're doing this in the food processor, because the food processor is doing the work for you, you really don't have to chop to any precision. You really just want to get it measured, chuck it into the food processor, which is what I love. So I just chop it, get it a little bit smaller than that. And I roughly measure about a cup. 
So that's about a cup. Yeah, into the food processor. That's a cup of carrot. And we have one and a half cups of beet. So this is where it's going to get messy. So beet, I do trim the ends, right? Trim the ends. And then I do trim off a little bit of the, the tough outer skin. You could do this with a vegetable peeler. Uh, I find it's really messy either way. So kind of your call, right? But again, I wash these too. So I just find that the, the skin on beet is a little bit more coarse. It's a little more tough, not like carrots. You can sort of, I can eat carrots straight up like that. So there, and then just chop that up. We need one and a half cups. So does anyone else relate that beets taste like dirt? Do it's kind of like the smell of dirt. Not that, you know, we're eating dirt, but that idea how they taste like dirt. Does anyone else relate to that? And like I said, I can have them grated in a salad, but I think it's because it's so fine and the dressing that's about a cup is absorbing the flavor. Um, let me see. Oh, Denise says she's making the apple spice hemp muffins. So that's awesome. I did a video on the apple hemp muffins last week and she's making them right now. So that's cool. And Carl is saying, hi from South Surrey and where do I get those gorgeous carrots? Okay, well I actually got those, where did I get those? I think I got those at Nature's Fair, Carl. Um, just bunch carrots, but I'll tell you also, Mary's Garden has really nice produce up until, I think they're open until October and they're down on like 34th Avenue, I think it is, no, 40th Avenue. So Mary's Garden, um, for sure, really good prices. They're not organic, but they don't spray all of their grown items. And I, it was Nature's Fair that I got those. And we need a little bit more beet, so I'm gonna cut a little bit more, because it's about a, one and a half cups. And so my little one's out at swim today, and they have to drive about a half hour to get there. And it's pouring rain, and they're in an outdoor pool, because the pools still aren't open. Well, at least our local pool is not open, which is kind of ridiculous. But um, they have to swim in the outside and it's freezing. Um, but she loves it, so she goes for it. They also cannot go to the washer while they're there. So when she comes home, she's just busting to get to the bathroom. It's terrible. They're there for like an hour and a half and they, yeah, they can't uh, use the washrooms. Okay, I'm just uh, telling that story. But it gives me a little bit of quiet to be able to run a video, so that's great. And we're using a clove of garlic. So in the burgers that I do like this, where we're not stir frying the aromatics, being onion or garlic, you don't want to use too much. Like if you're a garlic lover and you would normally put say three cloves and saute them in the pan for a, garlic, for a patty, keep in mind that we're not cooking down this garlic. It's going into the mix raw and then we're gonna cook the patties. So the garlic flavor is more pronounced. So with that being said, for me, that is a pretty big clove of garlic to put into a burger mix when I know probably my youngest is gonna notice that. So I might cut it down a little bit. Mind you, this is a large batch, so you know, it's not too big for the size of the batch, but I might cut it down just a little bit. Boop, and that goes in. Okay, so now I have to turn that on. And the reason I put all of that in first is they're really hard elements. And we wanna get that broken down first before we add the rest of the elements. If you start to work with the soft ingredients first, it becomes gummy in the mix and it gets really frustrating to work with. So working with the really hard things first, gonna pulse those down. So this is gonna get noisy. Okay, and that doesn't have to be fully processed, just, you know, work down. There you go. Isn't that pretty? Already that's gorgeous. I mean, it might taste like dirt, but it's gorgeous. <laughs> um, Karen says earthy, yes, earthy. Um, see, yeah, they taste earthy for sure. I see, I like them in salad too. I guess it's, you know, it's how much maybe you're having at a certain time or how chunky it is rather than being say grated in the salad. Okay, now we're gonna add, we've got black beans, sun-dried tomatoes, tamari, and rosemary. So I actually have some rosemary growing in the garden. 
smell of oh, fresh rosemary is so so nice so it's either a tablespoon of fresh rosemary or a teaspoon of dried and that's about the ratio when using fresh to dried herbs if you have a teaspoon of dried you usually triple it for fresh that's the conversion I've always understood it to be. So we've got about a tablespoon and guys, to me that looks like a tablespoon, roughly. If I minced it, it's going to be a little bit less, but that was my stock of rosemary. I think I just lost a couple of bits there. There it is. So I'm just throwing that in. I'm going to let the food processor do that work. And then sun-dried tomatoes. So we're going to use, how much? a third of a cup of sun-dried tomatoes. <laughs> Molly, I could ask you what the measurements are on this. You probably know better than I do. <laughs> She's made them so many times she could be um, guiding this video thing. Yeah, next. So sun-dried tomatoes, uh, if they're packed in oil, drain them off. Get, get the oil off and squeeze them dry if you can. But you know if you buy sun-dried tomatoes, okay, so look here. Uh, Carl saying doesn't taste like dirt, loves beets, I guess. Beet lover there. So check out these sun-dried tomatoes. Look how hard and not pliable they are. They're like, ugh, right? Dry and hard right there. Those tomatoes. And then I have these tomatoes. One, they're smaller, but they're also really pliable. So I prefer buying organic sun-dried tomatoes because tomatoes are one of those ingredients that, you know, it's preferable to buy non-GMO and organic. So when they're concentrated like this into a sun-dried, I prefer to buy organic. I also like to buy them without the sulfites. So look on the label to find that. But you know, use what you've got. Don't have to run out to the store to get those special sun-dried tomatoes for this burger recipe, just for future shops, keep that in mind. But you will notice that sometimes they're really hard like that, right? You buy them bulk, super, super dry, and then other times they're nice and pliable. If they're really dry, you may want to reconstitute them. Here's some more, got these online, and they're really nice and pliable too, and these are whole ones. So if they're really dry, just pop them in a bowl with boiled water, five minutes, drain, squeeze out the water, and then they're a little softer to work with, okay? So I just wanted to share that with you. So we've got a third of a cup of those. I'm running out of space here. My kitchen's not huge, so I'm always bumping into things, and um, if like a couple of people come into the kitchen while I'm cooking, like one of the kids comes in and then another, I'm just like, get out! <laughs> There's not enough space. Okay, so that's a third of a cup of sun-dried tomatoes, and we're adding those not just for color. So, of course, with this, we're kind of, you know, mimicking or I'm playing on the Beyond Beet Burger name. So, we're looking for vibrant colors. So, the beet's going to add the color, of course, and so are the sun-dried tomatoes. But the sun-dried tomatoes are also going to add a lot of flavor, like deep, well, it's that umami flavor, that umami quality that you can find in recipes sometimes and sometimes you eat a you know a dish and it's like it's okay and then you have another dish and you're like there's something special about that like what is it that's in there that's just kind of mmm and that's that umami quality so I find sun-dried tomatoes is one of those things that gives that tamari is another one and I'm gonna get some tamari and add that and it's just a tablespoon of tamari you don't want to use tamari. If you cannot have soy, you can use coconut aminos. They are a little less intense and they're a little sweeter, but they'll work fine. Um, you know, you could also substitute and use a little bit of salt. Do I have salt in the recipe? Yes, I do have some salt in the recipe. Molly, do I have salt in the recipe? No idea. So this is what happens. I develop a recipe. I know it very well when I'm developing it. And then I... Um, I forget what I put in there. So, but this is on my site. The link is in the description. So I put the sun-dried tomatoes in there, the tamari, the rosemary. What else am I putting in there? I've got salt in there, some balsamic. So I'm gonna get balsamic vinegar. Mm. 
turning everything up. Okay, so it's a half tablespoon of balsamic. And sorry, I just saw a text come in from my husband, so I thought something was awry. Um, I'm not measuring with a half tablespoon measure, I just eyeballed it. And a little bit of dill seed. So this is a bit of a different ingredient for some people, but I've already talked about it on another video, I think. Did I? I think I did. So dill seeds are not dried dill weed. Can you see that? They look a little like cumin seeds. And to me, so I think beet and dill are flavors, like an ingredients that go well together, and we often see them. Uh, fresh dill in a beet salad, something like that. I find that um, one, I don't buy fresh dill very often, if at all, only if I'm testing a recipe. It goes bad really quickly, so I just don't buy it. And two, dried dill weed to me is really unappealing. It doesn't have much flavor. So I use dried dill seed. And here I'm using a half teaspoon, and I pulled out a quarter teaspoon, so just doubling that. And it adds a really nice background flavor to the recipe. So the dill seeds have, it's kind of another note, flavor note, that's really nice in here. Cumin seeds is also nice if you want to try that, but it adds a, you know, it kind of takes it into a different flavor profile. But um, dill seeds, really, really nice. So pick some up and have them in your pantry for other recipes as well. Um, see a comment. Hi, Kara. She said, oh, she made these from the blog and froze them after and then took them with us on vacation. And she said they were fabulous, wonderful. And she said her carnivore father even enjoyed them and had no complaints. Hey, <laughs> that is amazing, right? When you can um, give someone your vegan food and you know they're clearly not vegan and they're not saying, you know, complaining about it or saying, what's in this? That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, that's always really nice to hear. Okay, we're going to get that blended. So that is the next component. We're going to get that blitzed in with the sun-dried tomatoes. Here we go. It's going to be noisy. So you can hear the sun-dried tomatoes kind of clunking around in there. Ooh, I forgot my beans. So it's two cans of black beans. And that's 14 ounce black beans, 14 ounce cans, 398 mils. Yes, you can absolutely, um, oh, here's a strainer. You can absolutely cook from dried. As I've said in other videos, I do not get around to cooking beans from dried very often, like maybe twice a year. <laughs> Truth be told, it's just, you know what? There's only so much time in the day and I don't want to be in the kitchen all day. I love cooking, but that part of the cooking of always having those things available, it's just too much when you're feeding a family. You know, three kids and it just becomes too much to try to keep up with. And especially if you're eating a lot of beans, you do eat a lot. So that's one can, boom, second can, and I drain them and then I rinse them. Try and do this quickly for you. And I try to get off the excess water because if there's a lot of water, <laughs> thanks Carl, don't forget the beans. Um, if there's a lot of water and that goes into the mix, then it needs more of something to absorb that water. So then it needs more of like oats or something to take away that moisture in the final mix. So you just don't want to have excess water in there, right? Sometimes I take a couple of towels and almost pat them dry. Wow, this is really great. Doing This is how I cook though. I'm very messy, I'm very messy. I got like beans flying everywhere. The dog's running around the kitchen trying to catch beans on the floor, but oh, he'll only eat chickpeas. He won't eat other beans. Ugh, he's really picky. Okay, so black beans there we go so i'm sure i might get um a question about beans can you use another bean yes you could 
I like to use black beans here because of the color, right? They're gonna help keep the color of the burger more of this dark red intense color. Another option would be kidney beans. I think they'd work really well in here as well. So uh, those would be my two options. I probably wouldn't go with chickpeas or white beans, maybe pinto beans, but you know, a small or any red dark bean would work well. So I'm gonna show you this in a minute, guys, once I curate a bit more. Ooh, found a little tomato, so we'll get to him in a minute. says glad I'm not trying to recreate the Beyond Meat or Impossible Burger. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's I I wouldn't know how. I've never been one to use seitan in recipes. Um, it never was something that I got into and I found when I did make a few things my family didn't really love it probably because I wasn't really great at it. So I've always stuck with using beans and grains and stuff like that instead. So yeah, I'm not trying to mimic it at all. So I just want to show you this color. That's pretty awesome, right? So now we're going to add, so that's really all just the beans and the veggies. So now we've got to add some rice and oats and the pecans. So when I'm batch cooking, I keep, you know, or when I'm cooking rice, I batch cook it and then keep extra in the fridge. So I made brown rice the other night, made a big batch of it so that it's in the fridge. And using the, that good old date container again, <laughs> I think every video I pull out these containers. That's how many we have. Uh, we're always reusing them. So, and then people ask, you know, what am I using this stuff for? Well, here's one of the, the things. And in the next book, this is what I talk about a lot is having the stuff in the fridge ready to go so that when you want to make something like a burger, you just throw it together quickly. And it's really about just taking that extra step of if you're making rice, make extra. If you're making potatoes, make extra. If you're making quinoa, make extra. Um, beans, um, even pasta, because I'll use pasta in leftover pasta in lunches, like reconstitute it and use it in lunches. Um, how much am I adding here? Two cups two and a half cups so when i get to this point in the recipe uh just trying to see what i'm doing here oh, there's half the cans yeah so i've got two and a half cups of rice i'm pulsing this through and i'm gonna break up the pecans and break up the rice but not make it too gummy at this point okay so we've got the rice in there and Oh, I said crush or chop the pecans. Guess what? I'm not doing that today. You could crush or chop the pecans, but I'm just going to make it a little quicker and chop them in here. So we're using about half of the pecans that were toasted and pulsing them through. This is a great food processor. Like I said, it's pretty, pretty big, but I do need to stop and scrape it down a little bit. And we also have to add some oats. Um, yeah, so the oats we're just pulsing through as well, and it's three quarters of a cup. This is rolled oats. And I'm kind of eyeballing it just to save time, but that's about three quarters of a cup. Pulse that through. So the oats will absorb any extra moisture. So when you're doing burgers like this and you've got the tamari in there and the balsamic and there's a little bit of moisture from the vegetables and the beans, um, the oats will suck up that moisture. They will literally, like a sponge, um, bring all that moisture in and plump up the burgers and make them um, really 
hold shape well. So, oh, and I found a couple of beans. I kind of want to add just a little more rosemary. So I'm going to add that. And then I am going to chop the last little bit of beans, or pecans, because to finish these burgers, I want to add the remaining pecans and have them a little bit piecey in the burger, so not all crushed up. So some of the pecans go in and they get worked down into the mixture. And then we add the rest and leave them kind of chunky. So first of all, I want to say about the pecans. If you don't want to use pecans because you have a nut allergy or you can't use pecans, then I'm going to pulse this once and then I'm going to hand mix it the rest of the way. So I did the really smart thing of putting the top of the food processor on my cookbook and now it's full of beet, but this is how I roll. <laughs> Take the blade out. This is where it gets a bit messy. So really, in my recipe, I say take the blade out and then add the remaining pecans. So that's just because I don't want you to overwork the pecans when you mix them in. But I literally just pulsed it. And then I'm going to finish hand mixing it. So if you didn't want to use the pecans, yeah, it looks good, right? It looks like you, um, Carl's saying you could eat it raw. Really, you could. Um, and I think these would make awesome little meatballs as well if you want to just shape them into little meatballs. And you can see this is a big batch, right? I tend to bake bigger batches now because I'm feeding a lot of people. And, you know, it's just what I, what I need to do. But what I like to do with this now is pop it in the fridge for about a half hour and let those oats just kind of do their work. Let them absorb that extra moisture and then shape into patties. So I'm not gonna cook these right now, but I will shape one into a patty just to show you. Um, what was I saying? The nuts, I totally lost track. So the nuts, if you don't wanna use nuts, you can't use pecans or you don't like them. I really like pecans. I think they're kind of like a little sweet and buttery. You could use toasted walnuts. If you can't use nuts, try pumpkin seeds. So I really find pumpkin seeds are a nice alternative, and if you toast them up, they'll have more flavor. And that's why I did toast the nuts, is because it enhances the flavor. So if you want to reduce the nuts for some reason, if you want to reduce the fat, if it's you know important on your diet, they have less fat in the burgers, you can reduce the nuts. Maybe bring it down to like three quarters of a cup, but when you toast them, you'll taste them more. So that's why it's really, really good to give them that little bit of toasting. When they're raw, they don't have quite as much flavor. And, oh, Carl's saying uh, he thinks in Vancouver, Sajuice makes something like those and serve them raw. That's interesting. I haven't been to Sajuice in about, oh, I used to go, we used to go in years ago. It's been probably nine or 10 years. I didn't know they were still there. That's cool. Um, but they're good. They had some nice things in there. And Andy's here. Hey, Andy. That is so kind. Um, Andy said my early books helped him transition from vegetarian to vegan 10 years ago. Thank you. That means a lot. Um, really does. Um, so I am going to shape one of these for you now and get my hands really mucky. And then I'm not going to cook them because I'm making these for supper and I do want to firm up the, the mixture. But when I make them into patties, dang it. <laughs> Where is Where's the ice cream scoop when you need it? I like to use an ice cream scoop because it helps scoop out the mixture. Now you could make them much bigger than the ice cream scoop. So I might do this, right? Like make it a generous cup or a generous scoop and then beat ice cream. No, it's not beat ice cream. I will not go there. Nope. I do have a purple sweet potato ice cream coming up in the new book, but not beet ice cream. And there you have it. That is my beet burger. And if you link to my recipe, you'll see them cooked and how nice they look cooked. And Molly has um, a whole bunch for on her page too. <laughs> she shared pictures of this recipe too. Um, Carl's saying, ah, oh, uh, so juice is closed right now because of the pandemic. And you know, it's a different, different world, right? 
Um, I come in the house and I have my mask on and sometimes I forget like it's still around my neck and I'm wearing it like a necklace, but oh well. So last look at the burgers. Now I hope you make these guys and um, have fun with the recipe. Like if you want to play around a little with the seasonings, try maybe cumin seed instead of dill seed. Um, thyme would be good in there instead of rosemary. Fresh herbs always taste really nice in these recipes. And keep in mind the note about the garlic, not to go too heavy on it. Because again, we're going to be cooking these for maybe 9-10 minutes each side. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to mention. If you want to oven bake them, are they... Denise is asking, are they firm cooked? Yes, they hold together really nicely when they're cooked. I haven't put them on a grill because we don't have a barbecue, so I don't know how they'd stand up on a grill, but they keep nicely, right? So there's the patty. It's a bit freaky because it does look, I mean, it's a bit pink in my hands, but to look at it on its own, it, it looks a little bit like a burger. Um, you can bake these at 400, about 10 minutes each side, and then flip, I put it on parchment paper, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, done. I like to pan fry them, same thing. Uh, maybe seven minutes, seven, eight minutes each side. Don't keep flipping them. That's when they start to fall apart. Let it set on one side and then flip. So that's it guys. I'm gonna get this into the fridge to make them for supper. If you wanna freeze them, shake the patties, form them, separate by little squares of parchment paper, put them into an airtight container into the freezer. And so don't cook them first because then they kind of dry out a bit. So you can freeze them, fridge, refrigerate them for I'd say about hmm, maybe three, four days before cooking them. Maybe not, two, three days, cook them. And they're also great leftover in salad bowls, sandwiches, whatever. So have fun with the recipe. I have to try and end the live video now with my beet finger. So <laughs> my computer's gonna get really muggy. Thanks for joining and um, I'll be back probably next weekend with another recipe, okay? Take care, guys, and enjoy the recipe. Have fun cooking. Bye.